Good morning, everyone. Oh, we can do better than that. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. We've got, uh, uh, we're being live streamed this morning, so we wanted to uh, uh, get started uh, here this morning for individuals who may be uh, tuning in online. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the Minuteman Ballroom. That's where you are right now here at the Reserve Officers Association. Thank you for joining us. We're delighted to have you here. I'm James Appleby. I'm the CEO of the Gerontological Society of America, uh, and we can't tell you how much we appreciate you being here as we uh, introduce a new report. Longevity economics, leveraging the advantages of an aging society. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Gerontological Society of America, GSA represents the experts in aging across the life course. Um, our members are researchers, uh, clinicians, and educators that hail from every discipline you could think of, and they study every facet of the complex process of aging. And thanks to increases in longevity, there's a lot more for GSA members to study. For this uh, report, GSA was able to tap into the deep member expertise that, that we have uh, in the areas of economics, uh, social work, industrial relations, and sociology. I'd like to sort of set the stage and get everyone in the zone a little bit this morning um, and ask you to just for a minute, take a breath, and think about an older adult that has been important to you in your life, someone who's still living, perhaps a parent, a grandparent, a, a teacher from college, a, a mentor, a, a neighbor, but someone who's had an impact on your life. Um, the report we're releasing today is about that individual and about uh, the issues of longevity that they uh, are coping with and the issues that they need to help be able to navigate going forward. And to bring it a little bit closer to home, um, I'd like to uh, ask all of you if you've ever had the thought, uh, you know, I'm just an older version of my younger self. You know, a lot of times people sort of think about that. Well, I like to turn that around and say, well, uh, really, we are younger versions of our older selves. So really, the report we're talking about today is about each and every one of us in this room because that's where we're headed, and uh, the uh, increased longevity we're all enjoying is going to impact us, and so what we're talking about today is going to be very, very relevant to, to all of us. Now, the title of the report that we're launching today, again, Longevity Economics, Leveraging the Advantages of an Aging Society, is very deliberately chosen. Uh, it addresses the, what we see as the advantages of an aging society, and really takes direct aim at the conventional wisdom that many people seem to have, that they default to assuming that uh, an aging population is a negative effect. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth, and this report uh, really points that out. The report addresses the many myths that are out there around population aging and provides examples of how population aging can be leveraged to improve economic growth and to strengthen the country. And some of those examples are actually pulled from success stories from other countries around the world and how they've addressed uh, population aging uh, through changes in uh, workplace policies, social policies, et cetera. Uh, the United States is rapidly becoming what uh, at GSA we're calling now an every generation nation. And by an every generation nation, uh, what I mean is you're all familiar with the population pyramids, and you'll probably see one in this morning's presentation where uh, you start at the, the younger population, and it's very wide, and as we age, it goes up and up and up, and when you get in your 80s and 90s, there aren't so many uh, individuals uh, in the population. Well, that population pyramid is transforming and will transform over the next several decades into a, essentially a, a rectangle. We'll have uh, the population pretty evenly distributed across all the individual age groups, all from uh, zero to four, all, all the way up to, to 90 to 94. So we are truly becoming an every generation nation, not one in which one generation uh, dominates uh, the, the discussion across the board. And the fact that we are becoming an every generation nation, um, in some ways uh, this whole demographic change seems to be a surprise to a lot of people. Um, and I think uh, we all know that demographers for several generations have been, been predicting we're going to be exactly where we are right now. So it's not a surprise. And sometimes I also get the perception that it's, we sort of feel like as we're trying to wrestle with this that 
it's something being done to us uh, as a population. Uh, why do we have to deal with this population aging? Well, in fact, it's the result of a lot of choices that have been made, right? Over the past uh, many years, um, tens of millions of American families have chosen to have smaller families. So we have a uh, lowering of the birth rate in the United States. Um, there have been decisions, decisions made by our elected officials around immigration and uh, how immigration impacts population aging. That has, has had an impact. And we've also had the benefit of amazing innovations in health policy and uh, health sustaining uh, um, technologies that really enable us to, to live longer and to enjoy the longevity dividend that's coming, coming along with that. So in short, it's our personal choices, societal choices, and this innovation that is resulting in us having population aging. It's truly a, a good thing and a decision that uh, the people have made along the way. It's not, it's not being done to us. It's our belief that we can apply this sort of same innovative thinking, the same uh, sort of innovative mindset that's led to the technological advances of today, the medical interventions of today, et cetera, to the issues of an aging population. Uh, and fortunately, we're pretty good here in the United States about coming up with innovations, about using our ingenuity to solve whatever uh, the challenge is that we might be up against. So I think we can do that again in this case. And I think it's best summed up by uh, one of the members of the working group that developed the document that's on your table today, uh, Dr. Axel Borsch Supan, a uh, uh, professor uh, based in Germany, uh, who helped us uh, create this document. His quote, and uh, I, I really think it captures it, is that the main danger of population aging is the lack of adaptation to a new demographic situation and not population aging itself. So the issue is, can we adapt to the population aging? It's not the population uh, aging itself that's the challenge. And we believe that the report that has been developed is going to stimulate new thinking and create some new dialogue uh, that's going to help us adapt to this new situation of population aging, this new demographic transformation. So now I'd like to introduce uh, our speakers for today. We've got uh, two uh, uh, individuals that will be sharing with you some of the uh, um, perspectives that are presented in the report. Uh, and then we also will have a special guest today um, joining us uh, while the program is in process uh, from the uh, Senate Special Committee on, on Aging. So our two speakers that will be with us throughout today are Peter Capelli and Kevin Crane. Um, after their comments, we'll then have a panel discussion uh, with some, uh, some questions that I've uh, prepared for them. We also invite you to be thinking about questions you would like to ask uh, of, uh, of the panelists. And we'll also invite uh, the individuals watching this in live stream as well to uh, send in any questions they would like to put to the panel. Our first speaker is going to be Dr. Peter Capelli. Uh, Peter has an endowed chair uh, at the Wharton School uh, in, uh, at the University of Pennsylvania. And he's director of Wharton Center for Human Resources. Uh, he also is a research associate at the National Bureau of Economic Research in Cambridge, Massachusetts. You've got the full bios of the uh, speakers today uh, on your tables. I encourage you to have, have a look at them. Um, but I'll just mention a couple of highlights of Dr. Capelli's uh, work. Um, he is, uh, has degrees in industrial relations from Cornell and labor economics from Oxford, where he was a Fulbright scholar. Uh, he uh, has published multiple books. Uh, uh, one uh, titled The New Deal at Work, Managing the Market-Driven Workforce, and then very apropos of today's uh, discussion, uh, Managing the Older Worker, which he did with Bill Novelli, uh, a uh, former CEO of AARP uh, in 2012. So uh, Peter will be uh, presenting um, a lot of the information that's contained in the report and uh, uh, as chair of the work group, providing the work group's perspective. We're also joined uh, by Kevin Crane. Um, Kevin will be providing us with the uh, perspective on the report from Bank of America Merrill Lynch uh, and how this information relates to uh, the work that's happening in the financial sector today. Um, Kevin is a uh, graduate of Georgetown University right here in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, he's had a uh, long career in the financial services industry, having senior management positions at multiple uh, firms, uh, Fidelity and, and Putnam uh, and others. He uh, has spent the past 14 years now at uh, Bank of America uh, Merrill Lynch, 
um, and he serves in that regard uh, as the head of enterprise financial solutions for the bank. Uh, and in that role, he uh, is the executive business lead for um, the delivery, uh, development and delivery of workplace solutions uh, for the small business bank, global commercial bank, the business bank, and corporate and investment bank clients and employees employees at Bank of America at Merrill Lynch, uh, a lot of different banks inside uh, BOA. So we're delighted to have, uh, have them with us today. Um, and uh, with that, I would like to turn the podium uh, over to Dr. Capelli, um, and then he will uh, be handing it over to Kevin when he's done. Please join me in welcoming Peter Capelli.